Hello. Let's talk about the Renee. Uh, so this was actually the most requested thing that I cover. Um, and it's this big device here. Um, so what is it? It's this three-channel sequencer. Um, and it's got some things that are very friendly towards composition and towards experimentation. Um, and it's got some things that are good for live performance. And it's really deep. And it's really complex, um, so we're gonna break this down into s as you know much as I can into something that makes sense for everyone. Um, so this is the overview. Um, my setup here is I've got my clock divider, and it's got six clocks, which we will see is kind of necessary for the Renee. Uh, you know, you need at least two clocks. Um, we've got our Renee sequencer. We've got a contour generator. This is just like an ADSR module. We've got two oscillators. We've got a filter and we've got a VCA. Um, so I'm doing all that just so like, you know, we can make sound. The main event is all over here. It like doesn't matter what you have. It just matters, you know, to hook stuff up so we can get a sound. Um, so the way this is going to work is we're going to take um, the channel one clock. You, so something you'll notice is that the Renee has two clock ends and three channels. Uh, so let's, we'll kind of talk about that as we go. Let's just get a sound first. Um, so I'm going to send my CV output to the one volt per octave of the oscillator. I'm going to send my gate output to the contour generator. So we've got stuff happening now. I am going to send a sawtooth wave to the filter. I am going to send the low pass out of the filter to my VCA. And I'm going to send the contour generator to the VCA. So now we have a sound. So we can do the basic stuff already. You know, we can open the filter. Oops, open the filter. Okay. We can change our attack and decay. Okay. So what is this thing doing? Um, first things first. Let me make sure my camera stays in the middle. There we go. Okay, so these knobs are notes. So as we turn these knobs, we get different notes. Okay, so now we've got everything, right? And as we turn these knobs, we'll get different notes. Okay. Now, we have pages. So what we have here is a right and a left arrow. Um, so the first page is access. Um, this is how many steps in a sequence. We have a possibility of 16, but we can take steps out. So here's 14 steps, and it starts over. We can also, kind of a nice thing is you can take steps out of the middle of a sequence. Um, so that's like a compositional tool. The next is gate. Um, right now all the gates are on, but we can turn gates off. So second page is basically rhythm. Okay, third page, glide. Uh, let's There's our glide. We've got to turn it on for the step. There you go. Okay, so we turn on and off our glide steps there third page snake so you see right now it's just going left to right up and down uh slowly up this grid we basically can choose different patterns here and we will talk about that at length at some point but you can see we're just changing the pattern again this is like a compositional tool the way i look at it our next page is a function page which we'll, we're going to talk about later that has to do with the modulation and cv inputs on the Renee. Um, so we assign those to do things here on this page. 
last page is quantization. Um, so right now you can see the top row is octaves. So this is one, two, three, or four octaves. And we can choose the notes. Um, so here is where we can quantize into a scale, because um, you heard that was pretty gnarly what we started with. Okay, so now as I turn these knobs, it will, it will agree. Okay, hopefully that makes sense so far. So that's our X channel. Y channel is completely identical. Um, the nice part about it is that it has a completely separate clock input. So I can take another clock and have it run at a different speed. And now our Y clock is going to move completely differently. So here's our X. We can just pull that. Um, let me sort of quantize this. It's just sort of like C Dorian scale. Okay, so X and Y. Now, the C page, this is our third output over here. Uh, so, what's happening? Boy, <laughs> what's happening is X and Y, basically, right? Um, so let me slow this way down. So what's happening is like what you would think sort of mathematically on a grid. So X is going left to right, Y is going up. So every time the channel 1 on my clock flashes, we're moving right. Every time channel two flashes, we're moving up. And this is where it can get really interesting because, like, this can do kind of however you think. Um, I can have the Y go faster than the X. I can have the Y go slower than the X. An interesting thing to note is there's no snake page on the C channel on this third sequencer output because we control it with the clocks. Um, so compositionally, what we can do here is like rearrange notes very easily just by changing clock. So let's experiment a little bit with that. I'm going to just do like C Dorian. There we go. Okay, we're going to speed back up. What you're noticing too is that the gate output is a combination of the clock outputs. Um, so as I change the clocks, we'll get different gates. we're getting like different compositions just by moving things around. Okay, so that's wild. Uh, you know, if you're thinking in terms of like, I want a composition that moves all the time. Um, this is your this is your sequencer for that. 
Um, so I hope this gives you some ideas to play with. This is like nody stuff. Um, and we're going to look at, you know, all the other possibilities. You know, we haven't even talked about axis and gate while we're doing this stuff, right? So we can like change this on the fly. Possibility. <laughs> so it's a way to like constantly change things. Um, so I hope this gives you something to play with and we'll look, you know, to learning more.